Today we're going to make a ceramic bobblehead. So I'm going to start by dividing my clay. I set aside about 20% of it to make other features, arms, legs, that sort of stuff. And the big piece, I just make a pinch pot. I roll it into a big ball, press my thumb in, and turn and pinch, turn and pinch. I want to make basically a long skinny neck that's going to come to a point at the top. It needs to be a very long neck. The head is going to be basically a pinch pot that's flipped upside down and balances on top of that long skinny neck. I'm going to set aside the main part of the body for right now and start adding other features. So I'm just going to make a little ball of clay, press it flat, and these will become my feet. I always like to think about how I can press tools into the clay to add extra details like toes on the feet and stuff like that. And now that I'm going to attach them, I always need to remember slip, scratch, smooth. I need to wet the pieces, scratch them, and then press them together and smooth over the cracks. The water makes the clay soft and sticky. It's kind of like glue for the clay. I scratch both pieces to create loose edges that get tangled together, sort of like Velcro. And smoothing over the cracks helps it to become unified. I want to sort of push clay from one piece onto the other, covering up any seams to make sure those two really become one. The next thing I'm going to do is take some of my scrap clay, I'm going to roll it out, and press it flat, and I'm going to press in some texture tools. I'm going to add just a little oval for a, a belly on this figure, and I want to make sure that I've got some interesting textures on different parts of it. So again, to attach it, I'm going to slip, scratch, smooth. I wet both pieces, scratch both pieces, and then press them together and smooth over the cracks. The next thing I'm going to add is arms. And I'm going to make simple sort of coils of clay, press it flat to make like a hand, and attach it to the body, slip, scratch, smooth, wet it, scratch it, smooth over the cracks. I'm going to push clay from one piece onto the other. As always, slip, scratch, smooth. I know I've said it like 20 times already. I cannot overemphasize the importance of making sure pieces are really well attached. I've seen far too many sculptures that looked great while the clay was wet and then just had pieces fall off as the clay dried out. When I'm attaching those arms, I try to think about an interesting pose. Usually I don't like to have both arms just sort of pressed up against the side, going straight down. It's nice to have like one arm up, one arm down, almost like it's sort of waving hello. And then I look it over, I look at it from all different angles, and I start to pay attention more and more to the texture. I want to have different textures on different parts to make them stand out. But I also want to smooth over cracks. I think about if I want to add patterns and designs where I don't have textures right now. So I'm going to use just this marker cap to make sort of dots going down and around the body just to create some, some variety to it. You can, of course, add lots of different textures, lots of different designs using a variety of tools. A lot of times unexpected tools can give you some very nice designs. I'm going to create some contrast by having some dots and some stripes and that's pretty much it for this part. I want to let this part dry out, put it through the kiln, let it make it harden before I move on to making the head. So now that the body has gone through the kiln, I'm going to make the head. I'm going to set aside a little chunk of my clay to make like eyes and ears and stuff like that. And again, I'm going to use the larger portion of my clay to make a pinch pot. Press my thumb in and turn pinch, turn pinch. I'm going to use this pinch pot to make the head. I like to check it against the body, which is why I do this as two separate pieces on two separate days. And now I'm going to add facial features. So I'm going to start off by making ears, just roll the ball of clay, press it flat. When I'm attaching pieces, as always, slip, scratch, smooth. I wet both pieces, scratch both pieces, and smooth over the cracks. I want to push clay from one piece onto another, cover up all the seams, and make sure everything is really well unified.
So now that I've got those nice big almost monkey ears sticking out of it, I'm going to move on to my next features. With most features that I add, I try to keep it sort of simple and cartoonish. To make the eyes, I'm just going to roll clay into little balls, and then I'm going to press it flatter so it makes more of a circle or an oval. Wet both pieces, as always. Scratch both pieces. And then I am going to press them on and smooth over the cracks. I always find it is helpful when I add details like the eyes to not just leave it as a circle or an oval for the eyes, but I like to press in where the pupils might be. I might use something rounded like the paintbrush handle, or I could use something else. Uh, sometimes marker caps can have an interesting shape. And I always like to think about details that can make my work stand out and make it unique. Next thing I'm going to do is add a mouth. And I'm just going to roll a simple little coil for the mouth. Again, I'm going to wet it, scratch it, and then smooth over the cracks. I want to make sure that all my pieces are really well attached so that nothing falls off as it dries out. It's really important to think about details you can add that will make your work stand out, make it unique. So I'm going to give mine a mohawk. I'm going to press that coil flat. I'm going to wet both pieces, scratch, and press them together, smoothing over the cracks. Of course, you can use a variety of tools and a variety of methods. You can add features to the clay, but you can also etch and scratch things into it. You can use additive and subtractive methods to decorate your figure. I'm going to scratch lines on that mohawk to give it a little bit of texture that will stand out make it more like the texture of hair, but also create a pattern that creates contrast with the rest of the head. Really, that's about it. 